Hey guys, so today we will discover the cloud formation service and we will be doing this by writing a YAML template. You actually can do it with JSON language, but for simplicity reasons, I do prefer the uh, YAML language. Okay, this, um, that, and our template will have for objective to launch an EC2 instance. Okay, um, actually a cloud formation template consists of several and many sections, but don't worry and be reassured that, um, I mean, there is only one mandatory and indispensable section and it's called resources. So for now, we are going to write the name of our section. We firstly have to know that um, each resource has to have a name and also a type. Okay, so for our first resource, let's give it uh, a meaningful name. As, as we are creating an EC2 instance, let's write down something like my EC2 instance. The type has to be AWS EC2 instance. <clears throat> Yes, I forgot uh, to say that each resource has to have properties. So we are going to define them. To be sincere with you, there are many and uh, I only remember those I used to use best practice. And the first one that came in mind is the user data. The second one is the key name for uh, my key pairs. Uh, the th and the third one is the instance type. Okay, the fourth one would be the security groups. There is a fifth one and it's actually yeah, the image ID. Okay, let's begin with the first one. Okay, you, the user data property, you can see it to exemplify it, if I may say, as a bash script you include, so your instance can be launched with a specific and initial configuration. So for example, if you want it to be launched with the NFS service enabled, so you can assure this by using this property. Also, you have to know that this property has, I mean, its content has to be uh, in base 64. And we are assuring this but by using an intrinsic function with the same name. Okay. And just after this, we are going to write down our script. So it will be something like this. And uh, okay, we will create a file. Uh, <coughs> okay, AOF in which I will write hi, how is it going? Okay. As you can see here, the comment, I mean, this line is seen as a comment and this might be subject to issues. So to overcome this, I will add a special pipe here. As you can see, its color has changed. Okay, in addition to what I just said, this special uh, pipe uh, allows us to write this as a text format. 
okay so it avoid us to just write slash n to say that there is a new line or something like this okay it's quite useful for the second property it's a key name and I will um, copy this and paste it here for the instance type it has to be a t2 dot micro uh, for the image ID it will be this okay there is one remaining property and it's the security groups as you may notice here this property takes um, an S at the end so logically its value has to be as a list something like this okay but to fill its value we have to know that the security group of my EC2 instance has to be defined in another resource in another independent resource I mean other than this resource okay and we will be referring to it here using another intrinsic function I mean besides this one okay let's create our another second resource resource and it will be my security group as a name its type will be AWS EC2 in a security group yeah it doesn't take an S at the end in contrary to this property as for the properties there are actually two mandatory ones and it's um, the first one is the group description and its value is something you can write randomly so I will just write allowing SSH from everywhere okay the second one is the security group ingress okay this security group ingress property has its own properties so the first one is the IP protocol its value is TCP as I am using SSH the second one will be the two port property its value is 22 the third one is forum port property its value is also 22 and the last one is the CIDRIP and it will take 0 0 0 0 slash 0 as a value as I am allowing SSH from everywhere okay let's get back to this property as I said seconds ago I will be referring to my uh, security groups by here so I will be using uh, my another intrinsic function I actually could have right, written it like this but this is another correct syntax so I will be I will bring uh, this this name and put it here okay um, okay as as you see it I mean the code right now it will our stack will be perfectly deployed but let's make it let's make it more complicated I mean let's beautify it somehow a little bit by adding for example the parameters section 
okay for the the structure is somehow the same things with the resources section for each parameter it has to have a name and a type okay for uh, for our first parameter i mean yeah i forgot to say why we are creating parameters so instead of just writing down these two uh, properties i mean their values the key name and the image id we could um, we want them to be passed as parameters during our stack uh, deployment so we will create the their corresponding parameters okay for the first um, parameter i will give it this name the type will be string uh, for the second parameter it will be my image id the type will be string also and i'm so fond of uh, of intrinsic function i will be using this for both of these two the key name and the image id so i'm going to do this for the the value i'm going to copy this and uh, place it here just next to just next to the the ref function the same thing for my image id okay so i think it's um, it's good i'm gonna save the file and i'm going to go the cloud formation I'm going to upload our template file. We can see the result in the designer. It is asking us to specify a name for our stack and it will be my stack. It is also asking us for the values of uh, parameters okay i will uh, compile them here <laughs> i'm going to add the tag okay Let's create a stock. Okay, whilst uh, this is being created, let's check out the, the designer. As you can see, it's quite simple. And just down here, you can see the code in the YAML language. If I click here, you can see the code translated to the JSON language. Okay. Um, let's get back to our stack and refresh it it isn't completed yet <coughs> okay so our stack is successfully completed and deployed let's check out the resources there are two as we actually have defined two so let's check them out For the as for the security group, it did respect our instructions. For the instance, it has been created in this easy, and it has been given a public IP. 
we could have done this so our instance would be placed in a private in a private uh, subnet but I decide I wanted to leave it as its default behavior okay let's check out the the key pair name okay as we can see it took my key per value the parameter value okay as the last uh, step we are going to connect to our instance by using sigwin or sigwin uh, for this third step this it's asking me to change the permissions and as I already uh, use this uh, this key pair I then gave it the right permission so I'm going to take this line and use it to connect to my instance Okay, so let's get back. Let's get back to our code. You do remember that we have defined this part of user data, but what about if I write ls? There will be nothing because because this part, I mean the the content of user data has to do with the root user. So let's become the root user <coughs> and do another ls as you can see the file is created let's check its content okay ha, how are you uh, how is it going get back to our cloud formation stack and delete it the resources that have resulted from this stack will be automatically terminated as well. So, uh, thank you for watching and I hope that you took benefit from this video.